What's up, guys? John here. I'm Sharice. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. So if you guys are just tuning into Cupid's Corner, we're here for you guys to help that relationship, that marriage, that possible future relationship. We're here to give you all the tips, the insights, and maybe give you some great advice to ignite those past flames that you might have had. So today we're going to talk about some things that I think that people really need to know about. And these are some of the relationship challenges, some of the most common relationship challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, because every week we usually talk about, you know, things to, you know, increase or enhance a relationship um, or maybe do some cool things or whatever it may be. But we don't really talk about a lot of the challenges that a lot of people are out there facing, right? Because let's face it, every day is not a storybook fairy tale for some people, especially uh, we, in their relationships. We just got, we just got lucky. We get lucky, and nothing's perfect, you know, yeah. even our relationship, but, you know, it's, 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 it's close, right? And it's always a work in progress to make it better. For sure. Um, so these are just some of the different things that we're going to cover today as far as that goes. So let's get right into it. The first one, all right, these are common problems with relationships. First one's infidelity. Mm. And I think this is a big one because it encompasses a lot of the different things um, for a relationship. And what do I mean by that? So infidelity is obviously when you're cheating on your partner. And this could be in a lot of different ways. And different people think of different things as far as cheating, right? Mm. I might think cheating is one thing and she might think cheating is another. Yep. Everything's so, cheating. <laughs> everything's cheating. <laughs> and that could be talking to somebody as far as flirting with them. Cheating. Um, going online, cheating. you know, and talking to maybe possible webcam girls or other females. Super cheating. Um, in, in not a friendship way, but more of a friendship, you know, flirting as, aspect. Mm -hmm. um, when you guys are, you know, hinting at some different things. Uh, that's another way, you know, and obviously if you're having any type of sexual interaction with somebody, this is obviously another form of cheating. Super cheating. Um, you know, it's, it's just, it's a wide array of different things that people could think about this. So the first thing you need, you guys need to do is, is really talk about what your boundaries are, right? What, what does this person think that cheating is? Um, you know, cause you don't want to break those boundaries and you don't want to test those boundaries without knowing because mm -hmm. you could go over the line and do something that you know, might not be able to be walked back mm. or the other person can't forgive you about. So this is really serious thing. So, and yeah. infidelity is on the rise because I think of social oh media and, and all the people out there, you yeah. know, that, that, that try to just wait for a problem to happen and try to intervene. Or, not or, even that. I think it's like you have all these, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like all these different platforms, obviously. So I feel like there's more out there more that's temptation more, that's the word i'm looking for more temptation to do things and it, you may not even be you know physically doing something but i mean there's many forms of infidelity absolutely you know so i feel like there are a lot more temptations than there were back in the day when there was no facebook there was no instagram there was no insta famous no there was, apps no apps bumble I mean, and tinder and, i know like, i have this ones. tinder thing like swiping the thing swipe and, left you know, and then you swipe and you find and then you move on and then you meet and then you find. And it's oh, so weird. Man. It's just weird. Yes. Uh, maybe I'm just old. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think the, <laughs> some of the ethics and morals are taken out of relationships these yeah. days. And uh, I, I think that people don't take relationships as serious these days or, you know, they get into relationships too fast without maybe really thinking about overall about their partner. Because, you know, relationships between two people, it's not just one person. It shouldn't be one sided. So at that point, you know, this is something that you should really discuss with your partner right away. And then if infidelities occur, right, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to talk this out with your partner and stuff like that. And, and you know, everybody's different as far as what they're willing to accept, what they're willing to move on uh, about in some situations. And, and some people, it's just a, a, a no go after some things happen. At that point, they just they can't get over it or they don't want to get over it or they don't trust you and they move on. And then at that point, you're like, man, this girl or this guy wasn't even worth it. Like it was, it was a one-time deal. Like, you know, but that's not a good excuse to your partner. It was a one-time yeah. deal. Like, <laughs> you know, they don't want to hear that. It's like, it's even worse. Well, you gave all this up for a one-time deal, mm. you know, that wasn't even that good. Right. And now you're in this situation. You guys out there too, just to intervene on this one. Don't think you're slick. This is guys and girls. Okay. <laughs> I'm being honest, right? Don't think you're slick. Right. Cause there's emails. There's everything. DMs. Listen, we are in 
yeah. going to be in soon. We're in 2021 into 2022, right? Yeah, yeah. Everything you do out there yeah. is trackable. Documented. It's trackable. Yeah. Everything, all the way from your cookies and your history and your and your text messages back onto your phone bill. I IP mean, addresses. There's a lot of ways to track things. They Trust will me. find you. I know. Yes. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I, it's don't try to be slick about it. I mean, I really think, like, if you guys are... Because I feel like infidelity, I mean, obviously things things just happen sometimes, I guess, out there um, that you're just not thinking and you're being dumb. But a lot of the times with people that have relationships, I feel as though there might be something else going on yeah. that could lead to that. Yeah. And you just let it go, 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 and yeah. never ever talk about it, discuss it. Or, you know, let's just say in the bedroom if something's not fun anymore. Or if, you know... It, if you guys aren't connecting, you know, or something's going on and you guys don't talk about it, eventually it's going to lead to something, right? On this topic, I have talked to the females out there. Maybe there's guys out there that do this too, but I do know. Sometimes I'll ask females, I'm like, so, you know, how many times do you guys, you know, get it on? It's like twice a month. Let me explain something to you. I know you guys already know I'm very straightforward. If it's twice a month, expect infidelity. I'm being dead serious. Nice. You guys have got, listen. I really think it's important. Yeah, it's, I do. I think it's important that you guys connect at least like weekly, <laughs> you know, if not at least every other day or you guys have got to be able to do that because if not, you got to expect that your significant other might look elsewhere to be satisfied. And I'm being very straightforward because this is the truth, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, you know, you definitely want to, you know, you want your partner to, to be satisfied and pleased, right? So I think that's where it comes into play. Now, you know, some things happen, right? And this goes wrong with sexual problems. Um, so ED issues happen with guys and then they're embarrassed like they don't, or they don't have the confidence to go in there. Um, they push it off or they make excuses or whatever mm -hmm. it is. You can be helped with that, especially with Titan Medical Center, you know, I'll plug it in there. Like, listen guys, we For help sure. men and females out with these problems because females go through postmenopausal programs or they're premenopausal and they're that having can these, it too. these issues low libido uh, dryness vaginal dryness mm -hmm. uh, you know and this just doesn't work for both parties right um so at that point when guys and girls are having these sexual problems like they can get help or you can get help so you can really like spice things back up in the relationship or mm -hmm. get that drive or libido back you know even with guys we talk about erectile dysfunction and that's you know, that's just them not being able to get the erection, but they still have libido and drive. But some guys lose the libido and drive with low testosterone and stuff, and especially females too as well, the drive in their mind. Physically, they can do it, or they can't, but at that point, mentally is what really is suppressed, and it's really, you know, causing these problems that could be happening in the bedroom, which can lead to other issues, yeah. like we talked about, because right. your partner's like, hey, listen, what, you, you don't think I'm hot anymore? Right. I don't turn you Start on. Start thinking about other things. Am I not good enough for you anymore? Why? And then, and then it starts jealousy, right? Jealousy and conflict. Jealousy oh, is sure. like, oh, you're, you're looking at her, or you're, who are you talking to? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Me and John have been oh, down this road. <laughs> wait, what's the matter with you? I mean, I've never had any issues, but. <laughs> not that. You know, but yeah, so jealousy issues can occur. I'm very jealous. Conflict, very. conflict issues can occur. Um, so you want to make sure that, you know, you're making sure that your partner is, you know, feeling good. You have them up on a pedestal. They're priority number one, right? I mean, that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. They should be your first priority, um, you know, on your list. And your family, if you have a family, should be your priority too as well. But, you know, a lot of people lose that. You know, they're, they're focused on other things, you know, whether it's working out or it's their job. They lose sight mm -hmm. of the priorities of it's really easy to do too. what counts. It really is because, yeah. you know, especially getting to the rhythm of next you, day, yeah. Bup, bup, next yeah. day, yeah. Next day. Really all of a sudden a whole week goes by and you're like, oh man, where'd the week go? Yeah. I mean, it happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, I mean, at that point, just listen, remember um, what the priority is there and, and try to, you know, if you have sexual problems or sexual issues, get fixed, get help. I mean, we can help your type medical center if you guys need it. 727 <laughs> I'll plug it in there. So you guys call or text us, you know, we can be able to help you guys out. Our medical providers will take care of that. So don't have any issues there. But the yeah. other ones, I can't help you out with infidelity. That's that's mm. totally on you guys, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, so when we talk about sexual problems too, the next topic will be intimacy. Mm -hmm. Now people automatically think nowadays, or certain people, I'm not gonna say everybody, um, that intimacy means sex. 
right? And intimacy doesn't mean sex. It's more of a mental mm -hmm. uh, stimulation between mental you and your connection. partner, right? Emotional type um, connection. Being intimate doesn't mean having sexual relations all the time. It can, I guess. Um, but it's really sharing, you know, each other, I guess, each other's time, space, enjoying each other. That That's really, you guys are really bonding and coming, becoming closer. That's what it means should mean to be intimate i guess right i mean yeah i mean i i consider being intimate when i just snuggle with him yeah, that's intimate to that's, me that's a good example you know like i just i'm snuggling and i'm like oh okay this is intimate you know to me that's intimate you know to someone else it might mean something different but that is a form of intimacy absolutely and the next one is communication oh jeez. we cover this every show <laughs> we say it every show and there's a reason why oh yeah because i mean this is like really it should be on the top of the list yeah because communication and communication breakdown are, are everything so having communication if you do proper communication you should be able to be straightforward and honest with your partner not hurtful, not mean, but straightforward mm -hmm. and just being honest. Like, hey, listen, you know, there's ways to say things like, you know, maybe we could try some different things in the bedroom or maybe we can do this uh, as far as going on for a date or, you know, maybe we could be more intimate together or whatever mm -hmm. it may be or something you don't like. Like, hey, listen, I really don't like the way that this person is being by you or whatever it is. Or sharing happy times too, sharing the good things. Like, hey, I really liked or enjoyed what we just did. Like, and that should be like in the back of your mind, oh, all right, she likes or he likes to do this. You know, maybe we could do more of this, you know, together because she liked it, I liked it, we had a good time, and you know, it's bringing us closer, having more bonding experiences. I mean, the important part is to listen. Well, listen. You're not just hearing what they say. You're not just talking. You're actually yeah. like, you know, processing yeah. it. You know, because yeah. some people, I feel like some people out there, they might be having a conversation and I'm sure all of us are guilty of doing it, but you're not truly listening right. to what they're saying. You know, I, I'm, I, I love saying like, okay, so what did I just say? And that now he's become like a professional at it to be able to spit it out, even though I, I he's doing something totally different. I can multitask. <laughs> So, okay, you're processing, he's in a process of no matter what now. So I'm glad we got to that level. But, you know, um, it's important to listen and make sure you are processing what your partner is telling you because then that's a breakdown of communication. Right, right. So that should be number one priority on the list is For sure. communication because that's a big problem with relationships. People don't talk. People don't say what's really wrong. They hold it in. They mm -hmm. build it up and then it explode or something happens. You go do something you didn't really want to do because you know you were mad, you were sad, something was going on, mm -hmm. and that drove you to do it because you didn't talk about it. You built it up, you held it in, and they really don't know. I mean, you know, I, I think that the longer you are with your partner, the, the more you'll pretty much know them to a certain extent, and you can see some of the tells, but you know, some people don't still at that point, or in early on in a relationship, and that could be a major fail for relationships mm -hmm. right in the beginning that don't communicate. I think that's, that's a big one, communication and trust. Yeah. And trust is built up over time. That's not something that comes overnight. No. That's something you're going to have to, for me personally, you have to earn trust. Right. It's not given to you. Right. It is something it's earned in yeah. my books, you know. So yeah. some people, you know, you're if, especially the, the guys or girls, if they're coming out of a relationship yeah. that had infidelity, you know, you're kind of walking into it the way that it is. And right. they might have trust issues to begin with. Right. You know, so you might, if you really, really care about this person, you might just need to work with them. Absolutely. You know, it's, it, it, you can work with somebody, Absolutely. you know, and if you really like them and you want it to work out, you could try to work with them and be like, all right, let me, let me show you, you can trust me kind of thing. You know, what can I do? Like, what can you know, I do to make you trust me more? You know, that's a, that's a big one. Communication again, asking, you know? <laughs> um, you know, this is another one. And this is a big one, especially right now, substance abuse. Mm. Substance abuse ruins a lot of relationships or affects a lot of relationships in a lot of negative ways. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you have a family and it's affecting the, the wife or girlfriend or, or fiance, the kids, you know, dogs, right? Your, your, your furry, your furry uh, you know, pets, you know, at that point, you know, they feel things too. And, you know, at that point, abuse can happen and it can take away a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. It can make your loved ones resent you, um, scared of you. You know, it ruins relationships because, you know, an alcohol could be a, a substance, you know, that's abused a lot. It really is. A lot. That's and it's wi legal, widely, right? Widely abused. So I, I could drink. It's legal. I, you know, I I could drink six beers. I don't care. And then nobody's, it, it's, it's, it's not a law against that. I'm free. I'm an American. So I can do whatever I want, you know. But later on down the line, once you're doing this every day over and over and over and over, mm -hmm. you know, it could be affecting your judgment. It could be affecting the way that you so react, true, yeah. you know, to different things, your relationship as far as, 
you know, what your partner feels about, you know, what's going on and stuff like that and, and want to help you possibly. But, you know, pills or all these other hard drugs, you know, out there. There's some um, hard ones. It really, it really does. Uh, and, and at that point, you know, it shouldn't affect your relationship. Um, and you should really, you know, talk to your partner about it. If it's really something that's going on in an abuse manner, then you need to talk to your partner. You have to do an intervention with them and try to talk to them. And they might be like, just totally against her. Like, you're crazy. I don't have no abuse problems. Anyway, so <laughs> at that point, just get some professional help if you need to. And if it's still an abusive relationship at that point, you might have to look for other things. Mm -hmm. So that's the show, guys. I'm sorry. I'm running down on time. So I want to make sure that... Uh, we get everything in that we needed to. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Next week, we're going to talk about some of the things that make relationships better, right? We'll improve relationships instead of some of these different challenges you might be overcoming. So at that point, tune in next week. We're here for you guys every Sunday, 11 a.m. ABC. And if you miss it, you guys can always check out our YouTube page, check Titan Medical Center, or our Facebook page. Anything else? No, just, you know. Don't cheat on your significant other. Oh, don't cheat, <laughs> communicate, and have good sexual and emotional yes, relationships. Must. Both, okay? Must. So I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we'll see you next Sunday for another Cupid's Corner. See you then.